In this video, we've got a 125 kill game with the bar from the support class, and be sure to stick around in this video because one, I'm going to talk through all the positives and negatives of this weapon in particular, and two, I'm going to talk through all the different power positions that you want to be using on this map, as well as how to move around this map so that you can find the most amount of enemies and therefore maximize the amount, most amount of potential kills you can get. And if you're also interested in seeing 100 plus kill game videos with every single gun in Battlefield 5, then check out the pinned comment on this video where I've linked to the playlist for that. But getting straight into this video and before talking about the bar in particular, it is important to note that right at the start of the game, the main thing which I'm trying to do here, as you could also see in the previous clips at the start of the video, is push towards the house there that's in front of me, which is in the right directly smack bang in the middle center of the map. That is going to be the biggest and main power position for any time you are playing uh, this map in Conquest. And so whenever you're kind of rotating or you're not rotating, you always want to be moving to and from that house or even just staying on and around that house because that is at the center of the map. All the flags around it, of course, where all the infantry are going to be, is going to be uh, an equal distance to the house that's at the center of the map. And so all the enemies are going to be running past that house. That's where all the main traffic and flow is going to be. And that's where you can find and see the most amount of enemies across the entirety of a game. And you don't have to do. And therefore you can spend more time, you know, looking and shooting at the enemies who are coming to you. Rather than you running around the map like a headless chicken trying to find enemies. So that's the perfect tactical power position for the entirety of this map and this game mode. Now, we'll come back to the movement around the map in particular towards the end of the video, but just a quick overview of the bar. You will know that I have talked about the bar and it has been included in my best five support weapons uh, video. So it definitely is in there. Uh, and I have obviously, as well as I explained, I put it in there over weapons such as the FG42, which is more of uh, a gun which you will see a lot of the, you know, the, the high level players and competitive players using this game. Uh, but a lot of people genuinely do overlook the bar for its versatility. Uh, not only has it got you know equal and standard statistics across the board compared to the FG42, it's got a slightly higher fire rate, which of course means it's going to have a slightly faster time to kill. But the main thing and the main benefit you get from using the bar is, of course, it has that you can change by holding down triangle if you're on PlayStation to the slower fire rate mode which really improves your accuracy at long range, as well as even the tap fire ability for long range of the gun. And therefore it makes it way more useful and more valid. You know, every person you see at long distance, you now have a, like a 50% higher chance to get that kill using the slow fire mode of this gun than you would on the FG42 trying, ta trying to tap fire or use the full auto mode. Uh, and so it's way more versatile and is therefore more beneficial in any scenario pretty much uh, in this game of course it's got the same magazine size and a similar reload time if not the exact same reload time uh, and so yeah all around it's a much more versatile gun which can keep you alive and be used to get more kills in way more different situations and scenarios uh, and that is therefore why a lot of people overlook this gun and compared to the fg42 and of course, like the FG42, the main downfall is going to be its 20 round mag size, meaning that pretty much after every kill, two kills if you're lucky, you are always reloading. Uh, so there is always a lot of times where you're, you're constantly reloading and therefore you are constantly vulnerable to enemies. So if you're not using cover and shooting from behind cover, uh, you know, obviously giving yourself cover then to be able to reload behind, which you're going to be doing all the time, uh, then you will not be doing well with this gun. So trying to run and gun with this is not going to work because you're reloading way too often uh, and it's not really made for close range encounters, even though it has got that high fire rate uh, and a good time to kill. It, w it might win you that one gun fight, that one of your one gun fight, uh, but that's going to be the extent to it. Uh, you will lose if you come up against a squad or there is a second or third enemy uh, rushing in on your position. Uh, in that case, as you know, I always say uh, sidearms, pistols are, are used for that last ditch attempt for a 1v1. If this gun is therefore in close range when you're being aggressive, only really good to take out one en enemy in a 1v1, then it's no better to use um, as an aggressive close range weapon as using and running around with a sidearm, really. So... Uh, you know, that's that's kind of the, the breakdown and overview of this weapon. Uh, and so you do want to be utilizing 
uh, cover all the time and of course trying to stay at least at medium range to be able to use uh, both its fast fire rate and slow fire rate. So now getting into terms of the movement and what's going on in this game, you can see here the enemies have got all of the flags uh, from our spawn side uh, and of course are now going to be pushing towards to capture their home flag of A flag. Me being sat directly in the power position in the house in the middle of the map, they're all running straight past this house or through the house as you can see to get towards A flag. And that's why this, this power position uh, and using this house all the time is perfect because enemies are constantly flowing to and from and around this house. I don't have to move, I can use this as my own uh, like bunker uh, essentially and just keep defending this and get as many kills as possible. Uh, and that is literally, if you want to get 100 kill games, knowing the power positions in every single map uh, means you don't have to move around the map as much. You spend less time running and more time shooting and uh, people might get sick of me saying that from watching these videos by now but that is the key to get in the 100 kill games. Now the same as you can see here, I am now going to start trying to push back towards the house in the center of the map. However, it is really busy and occupied with enemies at the moment. So you can see I do push to a house that is of course uh, in the center of flow and you know where all the enemies are going to be moving through towards the middle of the map. Uh, and I'm going to be use that as like a temporary uh, power position close to, close to the main power position uh, and as you can see here uh, there are plenty of enemies covering that house at the moment and it is going to be tricky for me to get there uh, and defend it especially with uh, a small magazine capacity gun so i'm just going to try and hold this house uh, for a little bit of course enemies pushing past as they normally would um, and i would be able to kill these enemies as well if i was staying in the main power position uh, of the house in the center of the map uh, of course there being a tank as well now the scenario uh, or situation, uh, if you do find yourself at this choke point here, try not to lean around the corner at the end or just push around the corner to look for enemies. Always wait for the enemies to come around the corner to you, uh, simply because, you know, right in that corner there, there's so many different amounts of houses around me, uh, which are close points of contact for explosives. So that we know there's a tank and we know the enemies have got explosives. If I try to just, one, look around the corner, they're aiming at the corner already, and they're gonna blast me with a million bullets. Example there with the explosive bouncing off the wall. And if I do stand there, a tank or any, any explosives can just hit the walls and kill me anyway. So I'm trying to stand back and let the enemies come around first before I can you know, use my audio to, to hear how many enemies there are, how many bullets are still flying, uh, to know when it is safe to finally go around the corner. And again, you might get sick of me saying it, but I'm pushing straight back to the house in the middle of the map, the main power position. Enemies, look, have got the church over there being their home, their home flag of A. They've also got uh, C, which is straight in front of me there, down by the bridge. And of course, we have B, which they're therefore going to want to run straight past this house to get towards them to capture B. Uh, of course, the enemies, infantry players, uh, normally don't go all the way out on the map to get those two flags that are out in all the fields. It's way too open, uh, way too easy to get killed, and of course you spend so much time running and traveling. So of course, uh, as always, I'm always staying uh, on this side of the map to find the most amount of kills as well. Now here, you might actually count this as a mistake by me. We haven't captured C yet, and so the main I should have stayed in the house to be able to kill the enemies coming from A and C to go past the house towards B, but I have made a push towards the church to their spawn flag of A, and I guess my main thinking behind this when playing this game was, uh, because this, video, this game was probably a few months ago before me recording this, uh, the, main, the main thinking here was that my team are going to go for C, None of my teammates at the moment are pushing A. If I go to A, all the enemies that do spawn here after we also get C, I will have free reign as long as I can stay alive uh, by myself to just get all the kills when the enemies do spawn here. Uh, and so that was kind of my thinking there. But I possibly, generally, could have had way more kills if I had stayed uh, at the house in the middle of the map. So I do take a death in just a second's time, uh, which I just cut out to save time. Uh, but I am going to then spawn straight back at the power position in the middle of the map uh, and I'm going to push towards the house on the right there just to get and, and close a bit of a gap on the enemies spawning at C. I'm still able to cut off the enemies as you can see there coming from A. Uh, I could have stayed in the house and utilized the slower fire rate of the weapon uh, but I did want to get closer just so I got a bit of a faster time to kill uh, on the enemies. 
And so in the next clip, you will see the enemies have pretty much almost got every single flag and we've had to spawn on a flag. Uh, the house in the middle of the map is now being occupied. So I'm finding a way to get as close as I can to the center of the map uh, without, of course, getting overwhelmed by the enemies that are already occupying that area. So as you've seen in multiple clips within this video, I'm going to use this house as like another mini power position for the time being to be able to kill the enemies who are one in the house uh, and again two spawning uh, at sea and now also pushing from B as well. So yeah, there isn't really much else to say in terms of how to play this map to find kills. You'll know, as I've said it a million times by now, just stay around the center of the map, around that main house, and all the enemies will come to you uh, and you won't have to do much. You can move around a little bit when you know there is a lot of enemies in one certain location, uh, but for the entirety and majority of the game, on average, of course, stay around the center and middle of the map. So I will let the final two minutes uh, play out for you guys, as you know, I know some people don't like me talking on these videos all the way through. Um, if you have watched this far, smash the like for me uh, as it helps push it out to more people. Uh, and of course, I will see you on the next 100 plus kill game. Don't get caught in the mosh pit The fuel to the fire Ain't nobody can stop it Trouble in my city But you know I'm across it Got a 40 on my hip And I'm liable to spark it